this is the Nisi Athena 50mm T1.9 cinema lens. It is the E-mount version. I've had it for a couple weeks. Nisi did send me this lens in relation to another project, so they have no say on this video. I don't have to make this video, so this is going to be more of a review. But just so you know, I didn't necessarily buy this, but let's get into it. So starting with the first thing that I noticed when I got it out of the box is the build quality. This isn't a very big lens, like you can see how big it is. This is the Sony 20mm 1.8 for comparison. They're pretty similar size, the 50mm is a bit bigger. I don't have any other 50mm lenses to compare it to unfortunately, so we don't get to do that, but I will compare it to the 24 to 70 that I'm shooting on now. But with that build quality, it's not that big. And for a cinema lens, it is pretty small, but it's very dense. It's just metal and glass and it just feels very solid, which I think is a very good thing. As soon as I got out of the box, I was like, okay, this is heavier and denser than any, any lens that I've ever used before. It's probably not heavier than either of the lenses I'm shooting on now, the Sigma 24 to 70 or the Sony 7200G Master Mark II. It might actually be a pretty similar weight to them, but because it's so much smaller, it feels heavier. And that's because it's just made it mostly out of metal and glass, of course. But overall, it's very solid. You can, you can hear that sort of metal on metal when you hit the end of the focus range. And there's not much plastic on here at all. There is no obvious gasket, gasket for um, weather sealing or anything, so. It doesn't appear to be weather sealed on the back, so I wouldn't go and shoot in a rainstorm with this lens, but overall it seems pretty solid. Also, it's not weather sealed because of the drop-in filters in this one, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Also, this lens cap thing, it's very solid, it's metal, it's got like a nice like felt on the inside, and it just sort of friction fits on the front. It's not gonna come off, but it's pretty easy to take off if you need to. Also, it has a 77 millimeter filter thread. So if you have 77 millimeter filters or step up rings or step up rings to a matte box, then 77 mil. And the entire set is 77 mil. The entire set barring the widest and narrowest are T1.9. T the 14 mil is T2.4 and the new 135 is T2.2, I think, but yeah. They also just released three new lenses in this set. So there was originally the five set, which was 14, 25, 35, 15, 85. And they recently at NAB just announced the 40 mil, the 18 mil and the 135 mil. So there's now an eight lens set that you can get. And that runs like, I think the eight lens set and ends up being like 15,000 Australian dollars, which is like 10 grand US, I think they're, roughly two Australian thousand dollars each lens. So, you know, they're pretty on the budget side when it comes to cinema lenses. And now since this is my first cinema lens, it's fully manual focus. It is a cinema lens and I'm not used to manually focusing. Well, I'm, I'm getting a little bit used to it now, but as you can see, I'm shooting autofocus on these lenses now. The th focus throw for the manual focus ring is 300 degrees, which is quite long. So that means it's very easy to be pretty precise in your focus marks, especially close up, because from 0 0.5 meters, which is the minimum focus distance, so 50 centimeters, all the way to one meter is all of that. And then from one meter to infinity is that. So it's like half of the entire range is in the 0 0.5 to one meter. So if you're getting pretty close, you can be very accurate with your focus. And that's one thing I have noticed, you can be very accurate with your focus, except at those, you know, longer distances when it, when you're out at like 30 versus 50 or hundred meters or even infinity or like a kilometer away, it can be pretty hard to get focus. And that's one thing I noticed when I was taking some shots of like mountains or yeah, I even tried a little bit of astrophotography with this, which is not a good lens for astrophotography. Don't do that, it's not wide enough. Yeah, if you set it to infinity, it goes too far, even if the mountain is a kilometer away. So so it can just be a little bit hard to get those longer focus marks accurate, but overall 300 degrees is pretty solid. And it does mean that it is a bit harder to, you know, turn, if you have to go a long focus rack, then handheld like barrel pulling like this, probably not the play, you're gonna need to follow focus, which I don't have yet, but I will get at some point. 
I did try the follow focus that comes with my Moza Air 2 on this. Here's a clip and it works. It's just a little bit weak for the resistance that's on here. And it's also just very slow. Like you have to turn it so much to, to turn it. So it would be good to be able to adjust the speed or the torque on that. You can't, but when I get an actual follow focus, I'll make a video about that and I'll talk about that then. And like I mentioned, the minimum focus is 0.5 meters, which is not very close, but it's pretty standard for 50 millimeter lenses. It's pretty rare for a 50 millimeter lens to have a minimum focus less than like 40 centimeters. So that's fine and you can get reasonably close. Enough anyway, it's definitely not macro, but it's usable. Okay, now when it gets to image quality, this is a very clean lens. And I'll talk about character in a minute, but when it comes to the actual image quality, one of the things that Nisi sort of advertises these lenses to do is have very high micro contrast, which is the difference and the contrast between similar colors and tones rather than, you know, overall global contrast, which is just between light and dark. In theory, the micro contrast or the high micro contrast of these lenses should make colors pop a little bit more and gradients between colors be a little bit smoother, especially even highlight roll off. So maybe the highlights here might be rolling off a little bit better on this lens if I used it on this shot here. All that being said, YouTube would probably be crushing a lot of that with its compression anyway, so you might not even notice it on YouTube. And here's a comparison at 50 millimeters of the Sigma 24 to 70 versus the Nisi Athena 50 millimeter. And now when it comes to character, now I'm gonna make a full video on character at some point soon, but these lenses are, like I said, quite clean, which means they don't have a lot of what we would call character, but how I sort of think of character, a lot of the time is just sort of like not perfect, right? That's, and that's how most people would probably think of it. It's, it's not perfect, whereas this is quite optically clean. Like it's not perfect, but it's cl pretty close. And that means that the bokeh has no particular like characteristics like a Helios lens, for example, that has that swirly bokeh or an anamorphic lens that has oval bokeh. So it's gonna be very clean, very smooth on a lens like this. There is actually surprisingly not that much cat's eyeing in the corners of lens. Like if you have a bokeh ball like right here, here's a quick test that I did just with a light on the ceiling. And there's surprisingly not that much cat's eyeing on this lens. And there's also very, very little chromatic aberration, but so is, you know, the Sigma 24 to 70. A lot of photography lenses in particular will have not much loca or longitudinal chromatic aberration, which is the way you have that fringing before and after the focus point. And yeah, just like a lot of photo lenses, there's not much chromatic aberration at all on this, which is nice because it gives you flexibility to add stuff like that in post. Or if you wanna go for a very clean look, it sort of allows that flexibility. Whereas if you have a Helios 44-2, whatever you do with that lens, you're kind of stuck with the look that it has, which a lot of the time is desirable. So I'm not gonna say don't use vintage lenses or you know lenses with a lot of character, but there is benefits to having pretty clean lenses like this. And like I mentioned before, I have the E-mount version there's actually two different E-mount versions. So each of the mirrorless mounts, which are the E-mount, the G-mount, EF, and L, I think I think is those, those four. They all have an option without drop-in filters. So it's just like any other lens. And then you have this drop-in filter one, it has a button right here on the back, and then you can just squeeze that and you take out the filter. Now there is a clear piece of glass in there by default. So like when you get it, it comes with a clear filter. I thought it was gonna be just an empty circle with no glass, but there is glass there. And then you can get NDs, mist filters, even VNDs. And that's something that I would use if I had one. If I had a VND on here, I would absolutely put it in there probably most of the time. And that just saves putting a VND on the front, especially if it's something like, you know, the one to five stop true color ND that Nisi makes and they make one for the rear filters. So I think that would be a pretty good implementation of the rear filter system. I just don't have any right now, so I don't use any. And now that's for the mirrorless mounts. There is also a PL mount, which maybe I should have got, if I get any more cinema lenses, there will definitely be PL mount and I'll get PL adapters just because, you know, who knows if I'm always gonna be shooting Sony. And you can still add filters to the back of the PL ones. It just has like a little bit of glass here that you like unscrew and then you can just like take that off, put a new filter on there. And it works similar to drop-in filters, but it's just not as easy to change out. Okay, now when it comes to the issues that I've had with this, which are very 
very few, not really many issues. There's a couple of very minor like cosmetic things like the markings on the aperture ring. The, like when you get it all the way to T1.9, the marking is just very slightly past T1.9. And then also for some reason, the T4 is like further away than the rest of them. I don't know why. It's, it's just like, there's a gap and I, I don't get what's up with that. Whereas the rest of them go right to the line. Oh, and that's only on the left side, by the way, on the right side, it's fine. Like there's, there's no issues. And then the one other thing when it comes to like the markings, now this probably isn't a bug. This probably isn't like, oh, mine's messed up or, you know, the focus markings are wrong, but I don't really like the fact that it goes past infinity. There's a marking for infinity and then you can go another like half a centimeter past it, which I don't really like. Cause it's like, okay, where, where is actually infinity? If I want to focus on stars, do I go to there? Or like, do I go past the stars? Yeah, I just found that a little bit weird and not ideal. Also with the drop-in filter, it's like, it could be a better mechanism. Like it's a little bit, it just feels, it just doesn't feel like it holds up to the same build quality that the rest of the lens does. So if they improve that a little bit, I think that would be, that'd be great. And like, they can do that just, maybe the filters that, you know, you can buy for these systems are better than the one that comes in it. So that like, that would be enough. And then the last thing that I'm gonna mention here, now it is sort of in this like issues section, but it could also go in the image quality or character sections earlier. I just wanted to mention it at the end though. And that is focus breathing. Now I'm not a fan of focus breathing. I noticed it so much in Andor when I watched that, there was crazy focus breathing and it just took me out of it so much. A lot of people have said that there is very well controlled focus breathing in this, like it, there's not much at all, which is true past one meter. From one meter to infinity, there's like no focus breathing. It's so well controlled. But between 0 0.5 meters and one meter, there's, there's some focus breathing. It is noticeable. So, you know, it's not ideal, but also, you know, how, how often do you do rack focuses within a meter? I don't know, maybe a lot, but yeah, so it's pretty good when it comes to focus breathing, but there is, yeah, there is a little bit in that closer focus range. And when it comes to actually like using this lens, it's been pretty good. I've had like no issues practically where like I actually shot a short film, sort of like, it's like a two minute little short film that will probably be the next YouTube video. I shot that solely with this on the Sony a7 IV, mainly because I got it and I was like, well, I'm not, I want to just use it for something. So I wanted to shoot an entire project on just this. So that'll be coming out soon. And I've had no issues really so far. I'm excited what I'm going to use it for next. And I want to get some more cinema lenses because this is cool. I just need to get a follow focus system and then we're sweet. So yeah, that's the Nisi Athena 50 mil. Nisi, if you're seeing this, I would be open to having the rest of them or any other lens companies. If you want to send me some lenses, cinema lenses, I'd be happy to use them and review them and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Nisi Athenas, the 50 mil in particular. This is one of the like stronger ones I've heard. Caleb Pike said in his review, like when they first came out last year, that the 50 mil and the 85 and the 14 are all like very good. And then the 35 and 25 are a little bit weaker. But yeah, let me know if you think these are worth the money. A lot of people compare them to the DZO Vespid primes. I feel like they'd also compare pretty similarly to like the Irix lenses. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do other things. Check out a link over here and a video over here. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.